Thank you. Uh, so I'm in Marseille. I've got a consulting company working for cell biologists. Uh, this work was done with Magali Suzanne in Toulouse. Uh, so we're concerned with modeling a um, morphogenetic event in the fruit fly, so Drosophila you saw earlier on. Uh, so when she passes from the pupil to the adult stage, uh, various patches of cells, which are called discs, give rise to the various organs and the leg disc, here uh, outlined in red, uh, gives rise to the leg, of course. So here it's a slice along the length of the, the future leg. Uh, you can see this as a sock. Uh, it's one cell thick and it's called an epithelium. And we're going to look uh, more precisely uh, at the small uh, folds here and how they form. So we can do a fluorescence microscopy. And here is uh, our leg disc, the sock. And you see that the cells form uh, a meshing, a network, which is called the, the apical junctions. Uh, so each of those, uh, or uh, each of those cells here, are actual uh, living cells. And you have two main actors, two main groups of proteins: the actomyosin network at, at the inside of the cell which is responsible for uh, contraction and the, the cell integrity in general, and adhesion between the cells. And this can be seen as a uh, motorized zip lock. So it's actively uh, uh, taking the cell and stitching the cell together. And so morphogenesis uh, will uh, be the series of uh, topological and geometrical changes that give rise to the new form. So you can have uh, cell division that will change the shape of the, the tissue. You can have intercalation where uh, two previously neighbor cells uh, uh, are set apart. And you can have apoptosis, so that's uh, programmed cell death, that's kamikaze cell. Uh, so uh, the cell here uh, will contract apically on the outside surface and uh, disappear, and if you look, uh, sagittally, if you, if you look at the body of the cell, it will fragment in small bubbles and be eliminated. And what Magali saw very early on is that around the disc, around the, uh, around the leg here, where the joint is forming, uh, you see a lot of cell death. Actually, about 30 cells will die. Uh, there are about, about 60 cells on the, on the perimeter of the, the disc, and about 30 cells die. Uh, around that joint and, and to form the joint. So the question is, uh, so what's the role of apoptosis? And turns out it's pretty uh, important because without it you don't have a fold. And if you don't have a fold in the tissue at the pupil stage, you don't have a joint in the leg. So uh, here you form those nice, fold, nice uh, folds and you have a leg joint uh, in the adult fly. Uh, here, you don't have cell death and you don't have a uh, joint. So the, the, the fly is like something like that. She can't fold his leg. So that's bad. Uh, adhesion and, and actomyosin are implied and you see that while the fold forms, you have uh, uh, an increase in, uh, in adhesion proteins, in, in ac uh, actomyosin activity, uh, and without uh, Without apoptosis, you don't see those adhesions. So uh, it seems that apoptosis is kind of upstream in the process and will uh, uh, command to the whole uh, series of events that will lead to the fold formation. And when the biologist uh, looked very closely at the single cell level, and if you look at uh, a single apoptotic cell, they were very surprised to see this actomyosin structure that goes from the apical surface, the outside surface, to the basal one. And that seems to pull on the surrounding tissue while the cell, the, the cell dies. And so you see that it transi transiently uh, def de uh, deforms the tissue. And <coughs> that, was never that, that had never been seen before. Uh, we thought that apoptosis was completely passive in morphogenesis. Uh, the, the classical example was uh, there is apoptosis to separate digits in the embryo. 
uh, digits are, are linked and, and the cells between them die just so that they uh, are uh, separated. But then uh, the, they show that there was an active role for apoptosis in morphogenesis, which was uh, new enough to, to get published. And uh, so the, the, uh, the picture uh, starts to be quite complicated because you've got this uh, uh, apical basal pooling and uh, augmentation of contraction and, and adhesion uh, apically. So <coughs> I was tasked to uh, put all those uh, dynamical features uh, in a biophysical model and see if it makes sense, if what we say makes sense. So um <coughs> I went to the literature and I re-implemented a, um, a 2D model of uh, epithelia so that the epithelium is basically a graph, so I used uh, the graph tool library. I don't know if you know it, but it's worth uh, a look. And a simple optimized uh, SciPy optimized function. And basically, minimize an energy, so that's uh, derailed uh, Newton here. And uh, so, after some coding, uh, when you start with a more or less uh, cylindrical epithelium and eliminate 30 cells, uh, if you put that diving force, that, that representing the, the apical basal cable, uh, you see a fold forming. If you don't put the diving force, the tissue contracts, but it, there is no fold. So here the model could uh, test something that was not so easy to test biologically because uh, you can't uh, shut down the actin uh, in part of the tissue and not, well, it's not so easy to shut down actin just for the apicobasal part and not the, the apical-only part. So uh, the, it was useful to, to build a model for once. And we were quite happy with, with the output. Uh, so uh, Magadi started to say, OK, so now we're going to look at the wing and the embryo and uh, see if uh, the same things happen. So can you model an embryo now? <laughs> and <laughs> of course, I developed this uh, taking constant out input from the biologist and, and modifying the, co the code as I went. So code reusability was not really my priority and uh, turns out if it's not your priority, the code isn't reusable. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I started refactoring and um, uh, I don't know if you did that already, but uh, when you start refactoring, uh, it turns out that you say, okay, I start refactoring, let's start back from scratch and rewrite everything because, well, where's the fun if not? So uh, the tissue project uh, started uh, three, four months ago, and the idea is to separate completely uh, the biology, the physics, and the geometry to have something uh, where uh, generic enough so that uh, we can take into account all those marvelous different tissue shapes, uh, epithelium shapes uh, that are in nature. Uh, the main uh, uh, problem or the main difficulty is that uh, contrary to uh, finite element um, models, uh, here the segmentation of the model, the, the, the grid on which you compute the, the physics uh, makes sense. It, it's uh, not arbitrary. I can't do uh, a Voronoi tessellation of the, of the, or a Dolonet uh, triangulation of the, of the shape and compute my, my elements, my, my physics here, because uh, the very uh, nature of the tissue is that the cells are actors and are uh, playing a role. So I can't have a, a whatever uh, finite element library I want to use. Uh, and uh, so, you can use uh, what, what's called a half hedge uh, data structure uh, picture here. So uh, that works well, but it tends to get complicated uh, in 3D uh, when you start to do uh, cell divisions because uh, you have to manage uh, the changes in, in neighborhoods uh, between cells and vertices and so on and so forth. So uh, the, ind the indexing uh, starts to get complicated uh, because maybe I want to compute a feature uh, for this edge that will depend on the surface of uh, those neighboring cells and all the neighboring vector, uh, vertices of the source vertex, uh, I don't know what. So uh, thankfully, uh, the Siegel uh, linear cell complex library uh, does this very well and defines an object that's called a linear cell complex and the cell term here uh, is not there uh, 
for nothing. It's effectively exactly the kind of object we're looking at. And it deals with all the, the, the nasty combinatorics. Uh, so the idea uh, now is to use uh, Siegel uh, to feed um, a, a model where, so Siegel deals with the topology, all the indices of the cells, the vertices, the faces, <coughs> uh, the points also because uh, uh, you need them in Siegel anyway and then use uh, uh, data frames as, as the core data because it's so easy to make computations in, uh, with data frames. Uh, so now uh, IO is easy, uh, physics, I re-implemented the physics uh, used in the, the previous model. It's quite easy to do, uh, to do physics with, with pandas, uh, visualization with, with matplotlib and vispy. And uh, with that small behavior box, uh, I hope I'll be able to uh, ask the biologist to explain to me the, the series of events, like in that place, uh, this cell divides, uh, this cell dies, uh, put it as a kind of a scenario and fit it to, uh, to, the, to the physics engine. Uh, so the, the, uh, there is a blog post on my website uh, discussing this uh, in a great more deal of de uh, details. Uh, the code is there, is there so please uh, come uh, hack if you want. And thank you, and thank you to you for your attention. Thank you so much. <laughs> so, <coughs> questions? Can this, this really cool talk, thanks. Um, can this sort of technology be used in a situation where the cells in the experiment can't be stained, as in? Yeah, so actually, uh, for now, I don't base, uh, the, the input of the model is not based on, on real biological data. Actually, uh, so for now, the, uh, the model works on kind of, uh, a geometrical approximation of the real tissue. Uh, now, gathering information on the biology without staining uh, is difficult, I guess. It's just a fluorescence microscopy, not just antibody staining. Yeah, it's fluorescence microscopy. So it's genetically modified uh, 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 flies that express uh, fluorescent proteins. Okay. Any more questions? Thank you so much. Thank you.